When the OGs speak, people listen. And uh, women's basketball is no different. It's no different. Unfortunately, one of the OGs, one of the greatest of all time, who some say is the greatest of all time, that is Cheryl Swoops, has some things to say about Caitlin Clark, uh, has rubbed some people the wrong way. And then you got some people at Iowa wearing some shirts talking about don't be a Cheryl. Those shirts have rubbed some people the wrong way. And shit, they just got all out of whack. So let's let's discuss this real quick, y'all. Let's try to get some straightening to the situation, all right? But before we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I am your homeboy first, and this is the realest, most entertaining show in the game. Put it on some Again, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that share button, put all your people on it, okay? All right, y'all. told y'all we're in the golden age of women's basketball. We are, okay? We're in the golden age of women's basketball. And so what we're starting uh, to see, along with the stellar play on the court, along with more fandom, uh, more, along with more TV time, we're starting to see more people talk about women's sports. More people talk about what's going on uh, in the game. More debates about the game. Kind of similar to the shit we see. With the men's game, okay? And so, when I see stuff like, you know, what Cheryl said, and if you don't know what Cheryl Swoop said, basically she was like, when Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese get to the WNBA, they ain't just finna walk in that bitch and just dominate like that. You know what I'm saying? She's like, there ain't number of hitters in the WNBA, especially since uh, the number of teams is smaller than the, the NBA, so the concentration of talent is higher. That makes sense. Some, now if you're a Caitlin Clark stan or Angel Reese stan, you're going to take umbrage with that because you think they could just walk in and goddamn turn up, but I understand what she's saying. It ain't like LeBron James walked into the NBA and just won the MVP. You feel me? Steph didn't walk in the NBA and win MVP. You, you, you understand? Uh, but you got Rebecca Lobo out here, an OG, who she didn't tweeted out that she believed Caitlin can go and walk into the WNBA and put up uh, MVP type numbers. Maybe she can. She is transcendent, at least on the college level. Now we're going to see if that shit uh, translates to the WNBA. Okay, but see, the more and more we getting the, 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 this commentary, you gonna have OG say they peace on the game. The NBA did the same thing. The NBA did the same shit, dog. When you had uh, Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain pass that shit off to Kareem and Dr. J, Wilt Chamberlain. Famously had shit to say about Kareem ass. Then when Kareem passed that shit off to Hakeem Elijah one and Shaq and all them type of Kareem famously had shit to say about Shaq. And y'all see how Shaq be doing motherfuckers today. You see how Charles Barkley be doing motherfuckers today. The OGs gonna speak. Is what the OGs say always based all the way in fact? No. Okay, because what Cheryl said on the surface that thing that, that she doesn't expect them to just walk into the, the game, the WNBA, and uh just dominate. It's gonna be a learning curve. Okay. I think most people say that's fair. But then when she starts saying stuff about the record and that Kaylin Claude, because of COVID, had longer to break Kelsey Plum's uh college scoring record. Okay, that wasn't true. Uh uh, uh, saying that Kalen Clark is older than everybody else. Okay, that's not true. You know, all that kind of shit. That, that has made people just attack Cheryl all together. Well, that's the kind of shit that goes on in NBA media. Have you listened to the, these NBA players talk? 
Have you listened to these NBA players talk about the folks that came before them or shown up the current players talk about motherfuckers in the past? I just heard Rasheed Wallace claim that Michael Jordan wasn't no good, like that, that he wasn't no great defender like that, that he didn't deserve them, all them, uh, all defensive teams that he got and shit. That all these folks used to bust his ass and all that kind of shit. And you just go watch Michael Jordan play, you're going to see that that man was the best offensive player and the best defense player on his team. But then you hear a lot of people who comment on it and say, oh, but uh, Magic Johnson bust them up. Santa Charlotte said, Magic Johnson bust him up for that triple double in game one. And then that led to Scottie Pippen had to take over in that series. And the rest that was, was, uh, the rest was history. And that's just a lie. Michael Jordan got in foul trouble in game two. They put Scottie Pippen on. They went on to win game two. Michael Jordan went crazy offensively in game two, by the way. Game three, Michael Jordan right back guarding Magic Johnson, guarding him the rest of the damn series. This, unfortunately, this is the kind of shit that transpires in basketball discourse, especially on these podcasts where truth does not matter as much to some of these folks and just the entertainment value is all that matters. She was on Gilbert Arena's show. Now, Gilbert Arenas, I'm sure we probably got a producer or something. Somebody could have fact-checked that shit right there. And maybe they did. I've seen the clip. I've seen the clip, okay? Hopefully, somebody fact-checked that shit right there. You real ones, if y'all watch the whole thing. Because I don't watch Gilbert's show like that. Because I know Gilbert just be saying some bullshit, okay? But from the clip of it, see, like, he just right there going along with the shit. And that's unfortunate, man. All it took was a quick Google search. And folks would have known Caitlin Clark's age. They also would have known that she's a true singer. And we could have avoided some of the bullshit. Because they shouldn't have let no don't be a Cheryl shit. Because Cheryl Miller, you, you want Caitlin Clark to go be Cheryl. What the fuck are we talking about? This woman is arguably the greatest player ever. At least in WNBA history. Now, I know women's basketball precedes the WNBA. So we got... Uh, Folks like Cheryl Miller that didn't get a chance to display their talents in the W, you feel me? But just for for the WNBA, so in the, you know, that was found in the 90s, on up until now, she clearly got a, a GOAT claim. So you you would hope that uh, uh, Caitlin Clark can go into the W and beat Cheryl, Cheryl Swoops. What are we talking about? But again, this is the type of shit that happens, y'all. So it's unfortunate. More of it is going to occur. More of it is going to occur, okay? So let's just try to be better. Let's just try to get the facts right. Uh, and let's not try to be overly sensitive about all this shit. See, it's racial undertones in this shit. Let's just be 100. It's racial undertones in this shit. You know what I'm saying? Folks who offended, some in my community, some in my community don't like how they think the media props up uh, white girl hoopers over black girl hoopers. You see this a lot with Sabrina Unescu, okay? Well, so, well, well, it seems like motherfuckers, including the W, try to elevate Sabrina instead of elevating Asia, who clearly is the best player in the W. You feel me? At least in my opinion, but hell, her track record over the last few years show that too, though. Um, also, what we saw last year when, when it was Caitlyn versus Angel, and Caitlyn went talking her shit too. You know what I'm talking about? Talking her shit to Haley Van Lift like a motherfucker. But nobody was tripping. But then when Angel throw that shit back at her, all these folks come out the woodworks to defend uh, Caitlyn against the aggressive black girl. You know what I'm saying? And so we kind of on 10 now. We kind of on watch for that kind of shit. You feel? So that makes us a little bit on the defensive for that because we don't like that shit and that shit ain't right. That shit ain't right. That shit ain't right. But also, you look at it, uh, white folks doing too much. They're acting like they got to protect this woman. This woman is a hooper. She is not no little pure, innocent Snow White that needs help by the greater white society from the old, mean, dark-skinned, black woman, Cheryl Swoops. No, stop that shit, man. Cheryl Swoops are OG just talking about one of the youngest, and, you know, some of her facts were wrong about the young just like some of these OG hoopers when they be speaking about some of these young hoopers, some of they facts be wrong. You feel me? That shit gonna happen 
let's not make so much of it. You feel me? Let's enjoy the game. Let's enjoy enjoy the OGs talking about the game. If the OGs are wrong on something, point that shit out. But we ain't got to go to the point where we start doing all this little other shit. That's doing too much. Okay. The game is in a great space. I want to see the game continue to grow. I wish Caitlin well and breaking the record. You know what I'm talking about? I hope that her and uh, OG Cheryl Swoops can goddamn get together. Maybe Cheryl can give us some pointers on playing some defense. Okay. But Cheryl was a two way. You know what I'm talking about? Caitlin needs to, you know, do a little better on that end of the floor. You feel me? Because she damn so, she damn so should want to be a Cheryl. You feel me? And if she uh, studies the game, like the way she be hooping, I would assume she studies the game. If she studies the game, I'm sure that she kn- knows that. So I wish her well in her attempt to break the record. You feel me? Uh, and I look forward to what's to come for the women's game. Put it on some. Please subscribe to my daddy's YouTube channel because the more subscribers he gets, the more attractive he looks to sponsors. The more attractive he looks to sponsors, the more money he can make. And the more money he can make, the more money he can spend on me.